In this lecture, we are looking at ways you can use JavaScript in your QML code. We are specifically going to look at how you can use JavaScript in property bindings, custom functions, and signal handlers. Let's go to Qt Creator and look at that. Okay, here we are in Qt Creator. We are going to create a new project as usual. It's going to be a Qt Quick application. We are going to call it JavaScript Usage Demo. Save it in a location on our drive. Use this as the default location for our project for now. Choose your Qt version and choose your cat. We are going to change the title to JavaScript Usage Demo. And to have something to work on, we are going to put a rectangle inside. This is what we always do. Its width is going to depend on the height, so it is going to be height multiplied by two. And its height is going to be 100 for now. We are going to give it a color of green, and it's going to be in the center of its parent, which is this window element here. So we're going to say anchors. Let's run and see what we have. Okay, this is our rectangle. It is in the middle of the window object here. I don't know if you noticed already, but uh, this is JavaScript used in property binding. We are binding the width of this rectangle to its height. And this is one usage that we just saw of using JavaScript in your QML files. You've already seen me do this a lot and you are probably going to do it yourself to make your properties depend on each other. To play with this a little more, I am going to put a mouse area inside. It's going to fill the parent. And we are going to allow this mouse area to drag this rectangle here. We are going to say drag target container. You already know how to do this. We've done this before. The axis is going to be the X axis. The minimum is going to be zero. And the maximum is going to be parent width minus the width of this container rect ID rectangle. So we're going to do, because we are dragging this rectangle, we don't really need to anchor it in the parent. These properties would be conflicting. So we're going to comment this out, run the application. It's going to be in the top left of the window and we can drag it from left to right. You can increase the size of the window and you see that it still works. So what we want is for the rectangle here to change the color when it goes past the X location of 300. And the way we do that, we make its color depend on the X coordinate of it. So we're going to say, if X is greater than 300, the color is going to be red, otherwise it's going to be green. This is a ternary operator, so if you don't know about it, you should check it in JavaScript documentation or any other C-like programming language. This is really common and you're going to see it a lot in QML examples. Let's run the application. And if we drag past some location on X, the rectangle should turn red and you see that it turns red right here. So we should do something to show the X coordinate as it changes. And we should capture one signal for when X is changed. We are going to say on X changed, console log of X. Run again. Okay, let's drag to the right. You see that we are passing 100 
200 and when we get close to 300 notice that the color is going to turn red ready red so our code is working but what i really want you to focus on is this thing here okay this is javascript used in here and uh, this is also another case of using javascript in property binding okay now that you send this i'd like to show you how you can use custom functions so what we can do for example we can move this property binding here in a function the way you do that you can define a function down here inside this rectangle and I call it to get height and it is going to return what we just did here this expression I realize this is a very basic and trivial example but I just want you to to see that you can do this if you want to do more complex things you're free to do so so we can pass get height here Okay, this is a function we defined inside this rectangle and we are calling it here. Let's run the application to see that things still work the same way. You see that the width is two times the height and our code still works. Let's flag this function as a custom function so that you have this as a reference. And again, you might have noticed that in this place here on exchanged, we have used JavaScript in a signal handler. Okay, so let's flag this too. And this really covers all I wanted to show you in this lecture, which is where you can use JavaScript in your QML files. To recap, you can use JavaScript in a property binding, just like we did here. I think this turns to function, so we should say in function. You can use JavaScript in property bindings. You can use JavaScript in functions. We defined a custom function here and we called it here on the width property to make it depend on the height that we defined here. We have also used it here in a signal handler where we simply did a console log to show the current value of X. Okay, this covers all we set out to do in this lecture. I hope you have a better idea of where you can use JavaScript in your QML files. In the next lecture, we're going to dig a little bit more on functions and see the scope of where you can use them. I'll see you in the next lecture.